What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another Top 10 List. Pokemon, like I've said before, has been around many years, and there's over 640 Pokemon. But we're not going to talk about all those. We're going to be talking about Kanto Region in particular. 151 Pokemon, the classics, and there's a lot of good ones, a lot of bad ones, but there's also a lot of Pokemon we really don't talk about. So, I decided to make a mini-series Top 10 List. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover every region of Pokemon, starting with Kanto, obviously, and make a list of 10 Pokemon I believe are unappreciated. Now, when I say unappreciated, I mean like no one really talks about these Pokemon or uses them. They are very good and very unique in different ways. Now, for this list, I'm not going to be talking about the Pokemon like, oh, this was had in Generation 2, it evolved into this Pokemon in like Generation 4. No. Generation 1 means Generation 1 only. Uh, Generation 2, I'll say, okay, it evolved into that, Generation 3, and so on. But for Generation 1, that's all it is. The first 151 Pokemon. So, let's begin. Number 10, Magnemite. Yeah, Magnemite, you know, the other electric type in Generation 1. Not Pikachu, don't worry, little buddy, I choose you every time. But seriously, I've used Magnemite for a few times in Nuzlocke runs and stuff like that, and I gotta be honest, Magnemite's not that bad. You get it pretty early in the game, I mean... Badge 5, Power Plant, it's not that bad, and if used it properly, it's special attack, special defense, and everything is so helpful. You have no idea. This thing's a tank. It's a beast. I love this thing. Very underrated Pokemon. I mean, Generation 1, you're never really going to see a Magnemite on a team, Magneton, or anything, but I really think you should use more. It's a very good Pokemon, and it should get more credit. It should not just be that Pokemon other than Pikachu. Number 9, Sandshrew. Now, if you're like me as a Pokemon trainer, okay, third gym, I need a ground type. I'm gonna go catch a Diglin Diggle Cave, because, you know, it's right there. But, you should head back up to Route 8 and catch this Pokemon. In fact, you should catch it and just keep it for the rest of the game. This Pokemon, very offensive and very defensive. Physical wall, physical tank. This will destroy anything for you. Such a good Pokemon. Very, very underrated. I don't understand why. Maybe because the third gym, you're right by Diglett Cave, you're just lazy. Oh, I don't feel like going back up. But seriously, this Pokemon has to be used more. I've never, ever had any expectations for the Sandshrew until I caught one myself and trained it up so high of a level that it just blew my mind. It was my favorite Pokemon on my team, and I definitely, like, just went, wow. This has to be used more. Number 8. Tangela. Yeah, Tangela also is a Pokemon that you really don't get into the end of the game. I mean, you can catch on Route 21 towards the end. I mean, badge 6, 7 in between there. It's not that bad, but usually by then you have a grass type. But if you don't, I recommend you pick this Pokemon up. Such great defense and special attack, it blows my mind. For a grass type like this, it was just like, wow. You can actually do something useful on my team and just like, not fail. I love you. Tangela is a Pokemon that did not get any credit for what it's done. There's so many other grass poison type, and even then, Tangela is just grass. It's not a poison type, so you don't have to worry about like confusion and shit, and just getting like killed by cadavers. You are fine with this Pokemon. No, you are better than fine. You are set if you get this Pokemon early in the game. If you could somehow get early, you, you're golden. The end. You are golden. Get this Pokemon right now. Number 7, Tauros. Yes, I know I've talked about Tauros before, but let me explain it again. You need this Pokemon. I know it's normal type, I know there's so many goddamn normal types in the game, but Tauros is different. If you can catch this Pokemon, consider that like a gift from heaven. This Pokemon is so good. Offensive, defensive, fast, good HP. You will not lose with this Pokemon. You cannot go wrong with Tauros. Diverse moveset, great moves. It does not evolve, that's the only bad thing. You don't need it to evolve. It's so good otherwise, that it makes up for everything else. Number six, and one of my personal favorites, Pidgey. Yes, Pidgey, one of the most common Pokemon in the game. Why would this be on the list? You catch it so early in the game. Listen, Pidgey, you have to train this Pokemon. Train it to Pidgeot. You will thank me. I've never, ever been happier whenever I catch a Pidgey. It is so good. I like it more in Spirit. I like it more in Fear. I like it more than any any Pokemon you can catch in Generation 1. Honestly, I really do. Pidgey is so common that I love it. I mean, I know. I know that people hate this Pokemon. I don't know why. It's so 
good. You really have to give this Pokemon a chance. I really mean it. Its stats are are not that good when you get it. Pidgeot's so good by that point, it's worth it all. It's worth training up that high. It's going to be your best Pokemon if you can do it right. It's going to be in there. It's going to be with the Tauros and Tangela and everyone else if you listen to me. Trust me on this one, guys. Trust me. Number five, Dodoro. Yeah, Dodoro. I keep on forgetting this is a Pokemon else. I really do because at this point in the game, whenever I see a Dodoro, I don't pick this up. I don't need it. I have Pidgeot. I have Pidgeotto. I have anything I need, honestly. But you have to give this Pokemon a chance. Good attack, good speed, and <laughs> I know it doesn't have any wings, but hear me out, it can fly. Yeah, it, it can learn fly. What? Show me what that looks like. I want to see that. I, I, I don't believe it can fly. I mean, that's the funniest thing. I would just, I would train that Pokemon just to see it fly. That's something you gotta see. May not be the best Pokemon, but somehow it flies. So you gotta figure that one out, guys. Hear me out. It can fly. Number four, Ponyta. Yeah, Ponyta is a Pokemon that's good for two reasons. One, good attack and speed. And two, it's a horse. It's a goddamn horse. I mean, look at it. It's a horse. And it has one of the coolest shiny sprites I've ever seen. A blue fire horse. That's pretty sick. But ignoring the shiny sprite and the good attack and speed, it's a balanced Pokemon. It deserves more credit. No one really uses this thing. Maybe because it evolves into Ravidash at level 40. That's kind of bad. And if I run Luffy, you do get it kind of late in the game. But this should get more credit. It's a blue horse. I mean, at least get the blue horse if you can. It's great, you know? Blue horse, man. I'm not I'm not gonna question you for blue horse. Pretty goddamn cool if you ask me though. Number three, Slowpoke. Yeah. Before I ever caught this Pokemon, I thought Slowpoke was horrible. I thought, holy crap, this is a horrible Pokemon. The only thing that saves is it's water psychic, which is kinda cool. But thank you, I'll keep my Kadabra slash Alkazam. But once I caught this Pokemon and I trained up to Slowbro, my mind was just gone holy shit this Pokemon can do it all good attack good good defense good special attack good special defense the only thing is <laughs> slow it's it's a slow Pokemon if you can ignore that speed give it the quick claw or something you have a amazing Pokemon it could do whatever you need to do except be a sweeper because it's slow but it does everything well and you have to use this it is one of the most balanced Pokemon I've ever trained and I would recommend it to any of you I will always use this Pokemon I never expect it to be this good number two Tentacool yes my fellow Pokemon trainers Tentacool is an underrated Pokemon that should be used more underappreciated is an understatement for this Pokemon yes we've been there before guys we're going, we're surfing the center of our island, and we're going somewhere, Seafoam Island, wherever you want to go, and bam, wild encounter, tentacle, alright, run, run away, no problem, two sets, alright, another tentacle, oh, oh man, another one, three sets, alright, tentacruel, man, they are being cruel, but if for some reason you decide to catch this Pokemon, you will be rewarded, special defense, and everything, special attack, HP, whatever you need, this Pokemon does. Maybe because it's so common, we take it for granted, but this Pokemon really needs to be used more. I've never, ever seen a Pokemon so common be so good. And, with number one coming up, maybe it's not that common, but it's good. And finally, the number one least appreciated Pokemon in Generation 1 is Mr. Mime. Now, Pokemon fans, be honest with me. Raise your hands right now if before Chucky Conroy used this Pokemon in his Fire and Leafing run, you used this Pokemon. Well, I'm waiting for your hands to be raised, guys. No one, I repeat, no one has ever used Mr. Mime before Chucky Conroy did. And he showed us this Pokemon's great. And I was one of those few who used him for him. I have to agree with him 100%. It does not have good HP. No, I'm not going to lie to you about that. But what it does have is good special attack and good special defense. And decent speed also. Like what you want from every psychic type. Magical Leap, Psybeam, Psychic, Substitute, whatever you need. Baton Pass, Mimic, whatever you want this Pokemon can do. It will give you anything you need and any time. It is one of my favorite Pokemon to use, Generation 1 by far. It is so underappreciated, it makes me mad sometimes, you know? You 
have to use this Pokemon. You have to. I mean, I know the nickname to give you, Mimean, is shit, but that's the worst thing about this Pokemon. It's nickname. Everything else is good about this thing. It's golden.